Howdy y'all, Christy here with Little Salty Home Center. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I am about to start planting out the flowers in my in-ground flower bed. And I thought that I'd bring you guys along so you could kind of see uh, how that whole process works. Um, you know, what I'm going to do as far as the weed situation, uh, the planting, all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to point out the things that are staying and then I'm going to point out the things that um, I need to remove and then some stuff that may fall victim to my weed removal. So this snapdragon right here, I planted it last year. It lasted through the summer heat, the drought, everything. Um, it lasted through the hard freeze this winter and it is going strong and it is starting to bloom and it's so lovely. So obviously this guy is gonna stay. I may have to move the lamp behind it, but um, this angle right here, it looks rather lovely. So I may, you know, just keep it like this. Um, these, <coughs> these plants here with the grass type foliage, these are actually spider lilies. They will bloom in the fall. Um, they are really pretty red flowers. I love them. They add a little bit of like textural um, diversity within the garden. So these are gonna stay. Um, a friend of mine actually gave me these and I love them. I would like to get more colors um, eventually at some point, but for now, this is super lovely. Um, obviously that's gonna stay. The rest of the stuff that's on this side, there's like a few weeds popping up. Um, maybe that I think that might be a marigold I'm not 100% sure or a Cosmo that's gonna come out um, there is like a million amaranth seeds like you can see here that are germinating and trying to grow and I don't want a million amaranth I mean that's kind of the downside of planting amaranth is once you plant it it's yours forever um, but I'm going to come through here with my garden hoe and I'm just going to go to town getting rid of uh, any of the little plants. Mostly trying to get rid of the amaranth. I think there might be some volunteer zinnias or marigolds that are popping up here um, from the zinnias and marigolds of years past going to seed. Um, but. Um, I have others that are going to come in here and be planted, so it's not necessary for me to try to save them. I mean, obviously, if I can, I will. This stuff is the bane of my existence. Uh, I think it's called Spurge, Sturge, Spurge. I don't even know. Nutsedge, that's what it is, Nutsedge. And if you don't get the whole nut whenever you pull it up, it's just going to continue to grow and spread and it's awful. Um, <laughs> I have been battling it since we moved in. Um, I will pick it and it comes back and then it brings friends and the only way that I think I'll be able to kind of get it under some sort of control is whenever I come through here with a hoe. Um, obviously, you know, that's not going to remove the nut with it, um, but if I intensely plant with intentional plants maybe that will help slow down this onslaught of this nut sedge here um i don't know what those are i don't know i think maybe birds ate something and sat in the tree and deposited deposited deposit you know they did things um i don't know what that is i didn't plant that there so i have no idea um <clears throat> more of the spider lilies. You're going to see those all down the garden bed and it's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Over here, I believe that may be a sunflower. Obviously, I didn't plant it. I didn't have sunflowers here last year. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. The best that I can guess is a bird doing bird things. And then there's some volunteer Alyssa that is I'm also going to try to keep that here here is a bean and now I did plant beans here in the fall so this is probably you know some of them um, developed their beans and I didn't harvest them in time and then the plant died off and the beans fell into the soil and 
Um, that's one of those. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it or if it's going to fall victim to my lazy garden practices um, with the hoe, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if it makes it through the onslaught of me gardening here. Um, this is where I was cleaning out the green stock yesterday. So let me just remove those. Uh, more spider lilies. That's all, any of this is spider lilies. And then down here is uh, mostly that nut sedge and a dog. I'll keep the dog. Hello, doggo. Hello. Belly rubs. You want belly rubs? Yeah. Um, this is the area that Lily is actually going to be planting in, so um, I'll go ahead and, you know, take care of the weeds and stuff for her, but I'm going to let her do all of her planting. Um, so, anyway, a few things are going to stay. Most everything else is going to probably go. Here, look. Look at all this amaranth, if you can see it. The red, burgundy plants. That's all amaranth. I, it wasn't even planted over here. <laughs> it was over there and it was over there. <laughs> but the wind blew the seeds or something. I don't know. It's all over here. So um, let me go ahead and get the hoe and I will start weeding with that and then we can start planting.
Okay, got the weeds mostly taken care of in there. Like I said, this was the very lazy gardener approach. Um, whenever I'm planting, if I still see some that are pretty firmly in there, I'll try to get them out. Um, otherwise, I almost did like the chop and drop method <laughs> with the weeds, um, but it warmed up, so I had to lose the hoodie, which is fine. I'm glad. Um, now we get to plant. I'm going to do the transplanting stuff first. Um, I had to look on my phone, which is where you guys are being filmed from, to see what the zinnias were that the kids wanted to plant in theirs and make sure that I removed them out of my zinnia seedlings here uh, so that I don't accidentally plant their stuff. But I got that taken care of. We have amaranth, snapdragons, some perennials, uh, coreopsis, hollyhocks, which are biennials. I'm going to go ahead and put them in this flower bed too. Um, I don't think I'm going to put anything in front of the greenhouse over there just to make it easier for mowing and weed eating sake. Um, other than that, there will be some stuff that is direct seeded. I'm going to put some dwarf sunflowers in here because I think it'll be fun. Um, and I already have one sunflower growing, so why not just add some more, right? Um, there's also going to be um, let's see, cosmos. Um, those are going to be direct sown, and then I have some other, you know, hodgepodge, onesie twosie type seeds that I'm also going to be direct sowing in here. Um, hopefully that's going to fill the space in quite nicely between the sunflowers, the zinnias, and all the other things. Um, after most of the seeds have germinated, I'm going to come back with cedar mulch for this flower bed. Um, every, the rest of the garden is getting straw mulch, but I'm going with cedar mulch for this one because it matches um, the mulch that's in the tomato patch on the ground. Two, when rain comes through here and it rains really hard, the water comes rushing off the patio and it causes a lot of the soil to leave this flower bed. Um, so I'm constantly filling up soil. So I'm going to put mulch on top to try to slow that erosion down. Also suffocate some of those weeds that haven't sprouted yet. Um, hopefully that slows down the weed growth and the grass growing into the flower bed too. Um, this is kind of an ongoing experiment. I've been kind of working to improve the soil since fall 2022 um, and it's in much better shape than it was. It was like heavy clay that was just like you would go to move it and it would just be like clumps of disgusting clay. Um, it's doing much better. The more that I plant in it, the better it's going to be. The more I add, you know, um, compost or fertilize, you know, all of those organic materials, the better the soil is going to get, um, which is what I'm trying to do. Even though this isn't our forever home, I want to provide a place for the next owner to be able to come in and also create a beautiful space if they wish. Um, obviously, if they don't want any flowers, then they don't have to do that, but I want to at least have it better than it was. Um, whenever we moved in, it had the two trees and then it had a rose bush, and that's really all that was in here. It had some mulch, um, and I didn't, it was a knockout rose, and those get diseased really easily, and I don't like the knockout roses. I like the traditional, you know, English roses. So I pulled that out. Um, it was like right here and it kind of blocked our access into the backyard. It blocked the view of the backyard. So it made it feel really closed off. So I pulled that out. Um, and now it's just working on improving the soil, continuing to grow flowers. In the fall, I need to remember to plant more um, clover and buckwheat. The bush beans did really well in here as far as like providing nitrogen back into the soil after they died off. So I need to remember to do those uh, cover crops again, like I did in fall 2022, just to keep that soil improvement going. Um, so from this point, I guess it's transplanting time. Um, I'm going to take a minute to try to set things out because I'm not 100% per, per sure 
where things are going. I know that the sunflowers will need to go. Let me change the view here. Okay, so this flower bed uh, butts up against the patio. So I'm the even though they're dwarf sunflowers, they're still gonna get like 24 to 30 inches tall, I think. So I think I need to put them along the patio here so that you'll be able to see the zinnias and the cosmos and uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna direct so some smaller marigolds along the front. Um, and snapdragons are also going along the front and uh, the amaranth will be in the back too. So um, yeah, I, I kinda need to map out where things are gonna go uh, and I'm physically gonna place the plants there to see so I could like see it with my eyeballs. Um, before I plant anything that way I can make adjustments before they're in the ground um, So it's kind of a little bit of a time-consuming process, but I think it will be uh, Pretty decent looking <laughs> Whenever it's done. I am NOT a flower farmer by any means um, but I do see the necessity for having beauty in the garden as well. So I'm trying to incorporate it um, as best as I can. There's a butterfly. Hello, butterfly. I'm trying to grow you pretty things. Um, so kind of learning as I'm going um, as far as like flowers and stuff go. Zinnias are pretty no fail as far as like an easy flower for a beginner gardener. Um, amaranth, uh, like I said, earlier you plant it once and you'll have it forever but I'm growing more because I like the textural difference that it provides with the rest of the garden um, and then snapdragons are pretty I don't think that I'm growing anything complicated in here maybe the hollyhocks because I haven't grown them before but we'll see um, after everything's planted I'm just gonna come through with fertilizer and earthworm castings just over the entire flower bed um, especially since I'm direct sowing a lot of seeds and stuff so I need to get rock and rolling because it's gonna take me a minute and at some point I'm gonna have to stop gardening for the day much to my complete and total sadness because um, I'm gonna have to go get the kids and then I gotta make dinner and be an adult okay so let's get started
we have it. All of the transplant stuff is transplanted. I tried to mirror it on both sides except where I only had one of that plant and then I just kind of picked a place. But there we go. Okay, so uh, the next thing that needs to be done for this flower bed is direct sowing the flower seeds that I want to go in there. Um, let me see if I have them all out here. Looks like I do. So I have one type of Coreopsis in there already. Um, I think it's Plains Coreopsis. I'm also going to plant, I'm going to attempt to see if this will just grow without any sort of heat lamp or anything. This is Lancelotta. This is the yellow variety. The Plains is yellow with red centers. Um, pretty sure that that one is native to Texas. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like I've seen it in like wildflower fields and stuff. I'm also going to direct so Love in a Mist, Miss Jekyll blend. I'm going into this with low expectations. Um, the soil is still quite heavy clay, even with the amendments that I've been doing the past couple of years. Um, it needs more, obviously. I mean, I'm able to work it, but there's still a lot of clay in there. So I got, <laughs> I still need to do some more work. And uh, then there's gonna be one, two, three, four varieties of Cosmos, I think. And then the uh, Marigolds, which are inside, I'm gonna have to go get, I'm going to plant a dwarf or petite variety. I'll look at the pictures and kind of choose from there. And then I'm going to be planting uh, teddy bear sunflowers along the back where there's still space. Now, I do have some amaranth along the back and then a couple of milkweeds because they get kind of tall and, you know, this. Um, so there might be like 12 or 15 teddy bears, sunflower seeds planted along here. Um, but I think it's going to be really cute whenever they're sprouted and growing. And I think it's going to help with slowing down the weed pressure. Um, my daughter's going to be planting Miss Mars sunflowers over here in that section. She asked if she could, and I'm like, you know what? I don't care. Let's have all the pretty things. So um, that is, I think, going to finish it out. Um, I need to really hunker down and get that done. <laughs> I've planted so much today. Um, the last video that I shared of plant the garden with me, with the okra and companion plants and such, that was this morning. Um, this is later in the day after I went in and had a snack and um, drank some water and stuff. Um, I need to get this finished today so that I could spend the rest of my vacation days like cleaning up. When I'm outside, I don't clean very well. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm trying to get this finished up because my husband was so sweet and built us a wonderful new desk to use. Um, but that means that on Friday, whenever it is completely ready for me to start transitioning my work laptop and monitors and stuff over to there, I need to spend some time also organizing the office um, and figuring out how to store different things. Um, he's a musician, so there's a bazillion in one cables that are just sitting in a cardboard box, and there's a lot of stuff just sitting in cardboard boxes, like it's put away, but it's not away in an organized manner. So um, I'm trying to get all this done so that I can spend one of my vacation days doing that. And then um, I'm pretty sure my kids are gonna want help planting their flower gardens, which is perfectly fine. Um, and then once I get this lettuce harvested, it's going to very quickly be turned into beans and cowpeas. Um, so this isn't even like the last of my planting in this flower bed. This is just the last of the planting today. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get these last flowers direct sown. And then um, everything is going to get watered really well. I still need to water all those raised beds where I sowed some seeds and transplanted some basil and stuff. So everything is going to get a really good water. And then 
I'm gonna go get my kids and make some chicken nuggets <laughs> for dinner. It's like a homemade version of Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets. Kids love them. Um, so that is going to be my afternoon. Let me go grab those marigold seeds really quick and then we will continue on with all of the direct selling.
Okay, well, the flower bed is now planted, at least the part that Lily is not going to utilize. Um, everything else, it is planted all the way down. I think I was able to get 12 sunflowers in. I honestly didn't count. I was just trying to get the seeds in. Um, I did fertilize, as you saw. Um, once the sun moves that way a bit, then I'll come out and water everything really well. It's just really, it's too high in the sky right now for watering. It'll just evaporate off. So that is all of the garden planting I'm going to get to do today. Um, once I harvest the lettuce, which is that right there, then once I harvest those rutabagas and kohlrabi and that green, green stalk on the other end of the patio, um, then I will be able to plant those two things out, uh, okra and some like patio varieties of cucumbers are going into there and then beans and cowpeas are going into here. I'm really excited about this garden season. Um, these raised beds that the tomatoes in are absolutely beautiful. We planted them full of stuff uh, this morning, the last video that you guys saw, but that is all I have time for. For this garden today we got a lot done it's beautiful um i can't wait to show my husband and my kids although they don't care nearly as much as i do but um thank you guys so much for joining me today if you liked this video please feel free to like and subscribe share the video comment do all the different youtube -y things that help the algorithm um help me show up in other people's um you know whatever um, it's helping me out immensely. I'm almost to 1,000. I'm creeping my way there little by little, and it's very exciting. Um, that, out, out. That's why I don't plant food in there. Anyway, yes, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and do all the different YouTube -y things. I'm slowly creeping my way towards 1,000, and I appreciate all of your support thus far. Um, the garden is almost planted. You guys can expect at least one more plant the garden with me video. Whenever I take care of these green stalks here, there will be an updated garden tour coming soon. Once things start sprouting, then I will go through and give a really detailed tour because there's a lot of life in this garden and it's very exciting. And I want you guys to see it. I want to share it with all of you. Um, but that is all I have for you guys today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Go find a way to get those garden manicures. Bye!